PlayStation Studios is rumored to be developing an ultra woke game centered around a so-called transgender protagonist who is an expert at knives and is going to be complaining about women not being in charge. Before we get to this, I'd like to ask you, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos here at the Trent Report. Wrote this up over at thatparkplace.com. And this rumor comes from Spanish a language account on X, Noticias PlayStation. And this is obviously from machine translation on X, but the post reads this. A casting for a PlayStation Studios game currently in production would be looking for the following. Girl of about 20 or 30 years old with dark skin and transgender. So I'm not sure exactly what that means. It sounds like it is a man pretending to be a woman rather than a woman pretending to be a man. Clearly, this is degenerate and should be rejected on its face just for having this as the protagonist, this character as a protagonist, because it's clearly trying to push this idea of transgender ideology, that men can become women and women can become men. It is impossible. There is no such thing as transgender, aside from the fact that it is this ideology that they are trying to push. It is a lie. It is not real. Nevertheless, the rumor goes on here and says knife expert. And the story would be about how their culture does not accept women as leaders in their community. Ironically, if the character is a man pretending to be a woman, it literally kind of mimics what we're seeing with men pretending to be women and dominating female sports. And also using it to uh, gain positions of power in the government because the government clearly favors women. Isn't that ironic? Anyways, this looks like absolute trash, absolute garbage. But we've got a little bit more here. They posted this as well. Regarding the casting call that I published a few days ago, I would like to clarify some things. It was never a bait. It is 100% legal or excuse me, 100% real. <laughs> the info is taken from a page where you have to register to see the casting calls. There are also Ubisoft, Activision, and other Sony games. I claim that it is a PlayStation Studios game because the casting director's history 99% of the time worked for Sony. Trust me, guys, I would never go into the mud without being 100% sure of things with a sensitive topic like this. As for what the website is, you would get um, ex-user Rhino the Bouncer claiming that it was actor's access. And if you look at that page's FAQ, it literally says this, a casting director or filmmaker will send us their project information we will work with them to get their breakdown prepared for release. They decide whether they want it to go, and we release it to agents and managers and our actors in those regions. Agents and managers view projects on BreakdownExpress.com, and actors view projects on ActorsAccess.com. In both cases, the Actors actus, Access profile is submitted for casting to view submissions and select the actors they want to audition. Actors audition via EcoCast self-tape, in person or through EcoCast Live. Casting works with their collaborators to finalize casting. Furthermore, the website confirms it does voice as well as animation work. It says we post over 97% of all scripted content that requires actors in North America. This includes film, TV, theater, commercial, voice, and animation. Obviously, one would assume video games are in this now as well, given the fact that they're using all kinds of actors in video games. We support the entire industry from student filmmakers to the biggest budget studio and network project. So they post everything there. So this definitely looks like it is real. It's coming from an actual uh, casting announcement on this Actors Access website. And it's not surprising that PlayStation Studios would be engaging in this. Obviously, we just saw them push this uh, 5v5 multiplayer shooter called Concord that's being developed by Firewalk Studios. PlayStation Studios uh, developer. And that game features a number of characters that have their, quote, preferred pronouns listed in their biography, indicating the game is pushing transgender ideology. This whole idea of, like, having preferred pronouns is literally the kind of the first steps of pushing transgender ideology because you're lying to people, trying to get them to uh, believe this idea that men beca can become women and women can become men. They it just, it's impossible. Can't, can't do it, but they try and lie, do spread the lie here through this pronoun stuff. So anyone 
putting pronouns in their bio or trying to push this stuff, they are automatically revealing themselves as liars and that they publicly lie all the time and they're not to be trusted. So even in this one case here, this character Lark even has undecided, which clearly indicates that there's going to be even more nefarious things happening. And we even have uh, the games uh, or the developers director of IP, Kim Crines, I think implying that they're going to be exploring this stuff um, with cinematics every month of the game. Uh, and she said this right here. She says, every character brings their own unique personality skills and wide ranging perspectives to the crew. Uh, one can only imagine that there's going to be a bunch of gender identity stuff here within those wide ranging perspectives. I doubt that there will actually be a character that says, no, this stuff is wrong. And uh, what you're doing is evil and you should not be doing it and trying to get them to stop pushing this stuff. Highly doubt that there will be a character like that. So this wide ranging perspectives is a bunch of BS garbage. And it'll probably just be uh, confined to ultra woke ideology and the characters pushing that stuff. Uh, she went on to add every week when you log into Concord, you'll be welcomed with a new cinematic vignette that will give you a chance to see our characters off the job. They will feature ongoing narrative arcs that grow the characters' stories and relationships and unpack the broader Concord galaxy. So you just know they're going to have a lot of that stuff here within these uh, cinematic vignettes that they'll release every single month. So that is obviously one of the most recent examples. We do know that they have also worked with Sweet Baby Inc., their Insomniac Games developer. Uh, worked on Marvel Spider-Man 2, and they're currently working on the upcoming Marvel's Wolverine. Sweet Baby Inc. announced this back in 2021 in September, posted this on, uh, I guess it was Twitter at the time, it's now X. So excited and grateful to say we're part of the teams bringing Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine to life with the amazing folks in Insomniac Games. It's been a truly marvelous experience. So they're working on this as well and uh, documented Sweet Baby Inc.'s absolute agenda in trying to push woke ideology into video games. Uh, it's a financial disaster. We know this because Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, lost uh, $200 million. Uh, according to Warner Brothers Discovery, their chief financial officer, Gunnar Wiedenfeld, said this. Starting with studios, the $400 million plus year-over-year -year decline during Q1 was primarily due to the very tough comp we faced in games against the success of Hogwarts Legacy last year in the first quarter. In conjunction with the disappointing Suicide Squad release this past quarter, which we impaired, leading to a $200 million impact to EBITDA during the first quarter. So absolute disaster on that front. And if you want to know what Sweet Baby Inc.'s mission is, it's right here on their website. Our mission is to tell better, more empathetic stories while diversifying and enriching the video games industry. We aim to make games more engaging, more fun, more meaningful, and more inclusive for everyone. And uh, they've actually gone so far as to um, promise to terrorize developers or threaten to terrorize developers if they do not get their way. Uh, Kim Belair said this right here. If you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many years, put this stuff up to your higher ups. And if they don't see the value and what you're asking for, when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want. And if you thought she was joking, she kind of says it as a joke, but then she says it's not. And she's actually being very serious. She says, I say that out loud as a joke, but it's actually very, very true. Because if you start to consider the people who are player and audience facing and you have to deal with mitigating harm and with keeping the sentiment around their game and their project positive, there's like a genuine value that you can press upon them both ethically and financially. You could say this is important. Obviously here, in my opinion, threatening um, companies with social media mobs, woke social media mobs. Remember, she did this in 2019. And uh, that was when uh, social media mobs were highly active cancel culture was at the peak this was before elon musk bought x and kind of put a stop to a lot of that uh a lot of those shenanigans and then she went on to say this it's also a valid discussion to have because if you're working with a thin narrative budget and you work in AAA, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised or dismayed by the amount of money that marketing can give you so she's obviously revealing here that she wants to enrich herself as well and uh, just basically use uh this um grift victim grift uh to um, make a lot of money for herself from these studios and the dei and esg money that they were getting from investors like larry fink at blackrock uh, she's also accused uh white male gamers of uh, being picky babies and uh if, and then also here i thought this was really important here she makes it very clear that she is indeed trying to inject wokeness. She says, none of what we're doing is about ticking boxes or about a veneer of wokeness. So it's not about a veneer. It's about real wokeness. Like she's literally admitting that is exactly what they are doing. She says, we actually have to care about making this stuff. So she's 
she's trying to push this stuff into video games has made it abundantly clear over the past couple of years. And it's abundantly clear on her website. And this is a company that PlayStation studios uh, and their uh, subsidiaries work with uh, quite often. And so it's not really surprising that uh, they would be pushing this kind of degenerate game where they're having a uh, quote unquote transgender character, which looks to me like it is a man pretending to be a woman and who's going to whine about uh, women not having control, even though he's a man. Uh, it's utterly ridiculous. It's utterly evil. But again, unsurprising coming from PlayStation Studios, giving their track record. But we are going to put a stop to all of this. We are going to continue to boycott these games. We're going to continue to make these companies suffer. They are going to continue to lose hundreds of millions of dollars like Suicide Squad killed the Justice League because we just are not going to uh, put up with this stuff. We are not going to tolerate this evil ideology in our video games anymore. And I think that is very clear with the fact that gamers are not purchasing games like Suicide Squad kill the Justice League. But let me know what you guys make of this. Let me know in the comments below. Remember to always be charitable, especially to each other, but to always speak the truth. Thank you.